perfection. It drove Bob Knight in his 42 seasons as a head coach. He even achieved it, posting the last undefeated season in college basketball history with his 1976 national champions. His methods were controversial, to say the least, but his success, three national championships, 902 victories, made him one of college basketball's most distinctive personalities and synonymous with Indiana, as few people ever have been. In 1971, Knight was hired away from Army by Indiana, a Big Ten school with two national championships. But the Hoosiers had made the NCAA tournament just twice in the previous 17 seasons and won 20 games in a season once. Knight took the Hoosiers to the Final Four in his second season. He won the national title in his fifth. The 1975-76 team remains the last Division I men's basketball team to complete a season undefeated at 32-0. From 1974-75 through the 1976 National Championship, IU lost once to Kentucky in a 1975 regional final after star forward Scott May was severely limited by injury. Many have said the 1974-75 team was better than the 1975-76 version. Knight would win two more national titles at Indiana in 1981 with future NBA Hall of Fame point guard Isaiah Thomas, and in 1987, when Newcastle legend Steve Alford set what was then an all-time IU scoring record. He'd reached five Final Fours, the last in 1992. Knight won 662 games at Indiana, the most in program history. Among Big Ten coaches with at least 10 seasons service in the conference, only Bo Ryan and Thad Mata can match or surpass Knight's win percentage, 0.731, and neither spent anywhere near as many years in the league. Knight's 353 conference wins are a Big Ten record, and his 11 league titles tied him with former Purdue coach Ward Piggy Lambert for most of all time. When he retired in 2008, Knight's 902 wins were an NCAA Division I men's record, which was later surpassed by Duke coach Mike Krzyzewski, who played for Knight at Army and coached under him for one season in Bloomington. That pursuit of perfection on the court was a stark contrast to his temper and controversies. He was accused of assaulting a police officer in Puerto Rico in 1979 while coaching a U.S. national team in the Pan American Games. His comments about sexual assault in a 1988 interview drew nationwide criticism. In a 2017 radio interview, he said of his former bosses at IU, I hope they're all dead. He is inextricably linked to two inappropriate incidents. In 1985, during a home game against Purdue, incensed by an officiating decision to the point of drawing a technical foul, Knight then threw a chair from the IU bench across the assembly hall floor while Purdue guard Steve Reed stood at the line to shoot free throws. In 1997, Knight was then captured on videotape choking one of his players, Neil Reed, during practice. The videotape was later published by CNN. That topped a mounting series of incidents that moved IU's administration to put Knight on a zero-tolerance policy for bad behavior. When he allegedly grabbed an IU student on campus in the fall of 2000, he was fired from his job. Knight swore he would never return to IU. Knight eventually took the head coaching job at Texas Tech, where he won 138 games and qualified for the NCAA tournament four times in six-plus seasons at Lubbock. After his controversial departure from IU, Knight would pass through Bloomington for public events, but he refused to formally return to IU. He turned down invitations to several organized team reunions and his own induction into the school's Athletic Hall of Fame in 2009. It was widely speculated that he was in poor health, and longtime IU radio announcer Don Fisher was the first to publicly acknowledge Knight was not well during a radio interview with The Drive and with Jack and Tom out of Lansing, Michigan in February of 2019. Public speaking engagements did little to dissuade this, as he struggled with his memory while speaking to fans at Center Grove High School in April of 2019. Then, almost out of nowhere, in April 2019, Knight attended an IU baseball game against Penn State. Unannounced, the former Indiana coach was guided through the Bart Kaufman Field crowd in a golf cart driven by an athletics employee. He took in the game, then departed as quietly as he had arrived. He bought a home in Bloomington in July of 2019 that was three miles from Assembly Hall. Then it happened. Knight returned to Assembly Hall on February 8th, 2020, for a reunion of the 1980 Hoosiers in a game versus Purdue. 
Knight walked to center court and was embraced by generations of his former players, while fans chanted, thank you, coach, thank you, coach, thank you, coach. I don't know if we'll see something like this again in college basketball, said Randy Whitman, a former Knight star who helped bring his coach back to Assembly Hall. He came back. This is where he belongs. <laughs>